I'm Martin and welcome to another great edition of MP Astro. Now as you can remember from my last video, I did a product review on the Royal Valley Optics 60mm ED Horizon Telescope. Now if you've not seen that video, please check out the link at the top. All right, that will take you to that video. It's a really good video. Yes, it's a long video, but I had tested it out for an entire year uh, on a variety of things on this telescope. And believe me, this is not a, it's not a disappointing telescope whatsoever. In fact, I'm that impressed with this little telescope that I've actually bought it from Rover Valley Optics. So, in this video, I have noticed that what, as I described in my last video, that this telescope can really benefit a 0.8 times focal reducer and fill flattener. And the reason why I said this, guys and girls, is that it's a wide field telescope as it is. All right, and you can get the whole field of Andromeda Galaxy in there with a normal DSLR camera like the Canon. This half crop sensor, you'll be able to fit the entire galaxy in the field of view. This telescope is a, a wide field uh, astrograph. However, there are certain objects in the night sky like the North American Nebula and the Pelican Nebula, for example, is a huge target. You know, we're talking a good we're talking a good four degrees, maybe five degrees of area of that particular deep sky object, which is quite huge, but incredibly faint as well. But on this telescope, it only just fits, you can, I can fit the entire uh, North American Nebula and bits of the Pelican Nebula. And this is the thing, it's an F6 telescope, which is quite fast, but I really think that uh, a, a focal reducer 0.8 times at least will really benefit this telescope a lot more. And I'm hoping to get the entire uh, Pelican and American, North American Nebula in the whole field of view with a normal DSLR camera. Okay, bigger the sensor cameras or or astro cameras will also help widen the field of view. But with this particular model is if I can speed up the optics by increasing the F ratio, you know, making it down to about F 4.8, you can really capture a lot more data a lot quicker. Plus you're going to get a wider field of view as well. So you won't just get part of a nebula you'll get the entire lot hopefully so i've done a bit of research and i've taken the gamble and um, i was looking around and be scanning for a particular product that could possibly fit uh, this telescope and luckily i have uh, been looking around for this 0.8 times focal reducer and field flattener and believe me it was really hard to find uh, a particular product to fit onto this telescope. Luckily I'd like to uh, wish to thank my wife Claudia for purchasing uh, this uh, Christmas present for me which I'm really really grateful and uh, obviously it was a link I provided and also she, she got it, uh, I didn't expect it. So I got this present over Christmas and uh, I must admit she ordered the right one and it's exactly what I needed. So if you're interested in finding out more about this video, please hit a like button. And again, if you're new to the channel, please subscribe onto my channel. And again, please share this video out. This will help a lot of people who probably have got this telescope or other branded telescope that are wishing to do this product I'm going to review. All right, this might help a lot of people out. And again, click on the notification bell. This will also 
will keep you notified for any new videos coming out soon. So, enough with the talking. If you want to find out more about what I've got, that I've got for Christmas from my lovely wife, please keep watching and let's do this. And as you can see, we've got plain and simple box. And what we've got is the, uh, it's a William Optics flattener and the code is ZS61R. So it's also labelled as a P flat 61R, which means the flat is the flattener and you've got the R, which is the reducer. So th the product code is PR0D8560 is the code. Again, this is available from Rover Valley Optics. Uh, price around £219 is the cost of this fuel flattener and uh, reducer. Now, it's quite a very expensive item. It's also available from First Light Optics as well. Same price. So yeah, it's an expensive field flattener and focal reducer. So as you can see, we take a close look. It's well protected inside the box. And we've got a product warranty, which is really good. So I'm guessing, what's the warranty? Yes, you get a two year warranty with this product. And as you can see, with all good products like this, it's well packaged and it's, it's got a foam lining, which is good to see. So this is the field flattener and reducer that I was talking about. So as you can see here, we've got a very nice, smart, compact design here. Of the field flattener and focal reducer from William Optics. Now this is 0.8 times. I must say extremely well made. The quality it just it's unbelievable. I do like how there is dust caps for both ends. Something that Rover Valley Optics need to do on their field flattener. They need to put the the caps on there on both sides. Because again, nobody wants to get some dust particles in their images, which is quite annoying. Which means, which also means you need to take flat frames to order to process those dust particles in your images. Now, the one unique feature of this is, I like about this focal reducer, is it's got a field rotator. So when you've got a camera, You've got a dial across here, all right? You've got the marker there, all right? And as you're rotating the camera on the telescope, you can maneuver the angle of the camera orientation, all right? So you can fit the DSLR uh, field of view of the object you want to view, all right? So when you rotate it round, particularly if you're imaging a galaxy like Andromeda Galaxy, with that object alone, it has long spiral arms. And uh, you need to sometimes tilt the camera to get the maximum exposure of that sensor to get the whole spiral arms in that image. And that's why you need a field rotator like this. Now I must admit, this is very smooth. It looks like the actual rotator is not on a bush it feels like it's lubricated with a very fine bearing there's actually a bearing in there there's no free play at all and I love this aluminium ionized lock screw right which is heavy duty and it locks in place and it's not budging so that's also a good feature to see so I like the caps again Aluminium ionized caps, really good thread. What we've got here, so what we've got here is we've got an M54 thread, and on this end, we've got 
an M48 thread, which is really good for full frame cameras, full sensor cameras. So you can put bigger sensors on there. And as you can see here, the optics are gorgeous. Look at that, the coatings on both sides. It's a, it's a obviously it's multi coated uh, highly polished FPL 53 glass. All right, this is not this is a high quality fuel flattener and focal reducer. All right, and hence the reason why the price is out, which is quite expensive to you, Monsieur. But again, you are paying for superior optics. Now, I must admit. The weight of it is also heavy. It feels very heavy. It's a big lump of glass for starters, which is needed to obviously for a wide field telescope, the lenses need to be grinded and polished to a very steep tolerance. All right, so it's a very heavy duty piece of equipment. All right. So as we can see, we're going to measure her up the length of this device is around 89 millimeters long and obviously the diameter of the actual rotator is if I measure it there across we've got around about 72 there and at the camera side the actual dimensions is 59 millimeters from the camera end. So it's quite a bulky size uh, for a field flattener and focal reducer. And we're going to measure her up. And wow, as you can see here, we got 464 grams. It's almost half a kilogram, just about. That's a that's quite heavy for an item of this size. That's a big lump. That's a big lump for a focal reducer and field flattener. I've got a lot of field flatteners and focal reducers, and there's no way near as heavy as that. And even with the dust caps on, yeah. 497 grams so yeah that's a lot of weight so that's one disadvantage i would say about this product is it's quite a heavy lump and it's almost 500 grams of weight there so it's not a light piece of equipment whatsoever so that's the only gripe i have so far however the quality the glass, the optics, it's fantastic. Now, I've been using a DSLR camera with internal T-rings with a filter. Now, this is the Barda Canon EOS T2 to M48 protective T-ring, and this has a light pollution filter. At the moment, I've got the IDAS UTEC, uh, which is the LPS D2 filter, fantastic filter however with this filter i am absolutely fed up of changing filters on on there onto the t-ring constantly and this is a disadvantage of that all right it makes setup a little bit harder all right it's particularly if you want to change filters really quickly again it's a nice because you've got to take all the screws off the allen screws then take off the, the other part, then unscrew the filter itself. And as you're taking the filter out, you could also uh, put your fingerprints by mistake on there or get dust particles on the sensor and all that. So yeah, the design that I've been using, is it is good, but it's not so great, okay? And you can thread it on there, not a problem, because this fuel flattener, because this field flattener does accept the M48 thread, and I must admit, it fits on there very nicely, all right, onto the border T-ring, all right? So it fits on there, not a problem, okay? 
However, what I really want to show you guys and girls is this. On this side is a very nice feature. And on here we've got an M48 thread, which means if you've got any other two inch filters, you can actually screw onto the internal thread of the fuel flattener and fork reducer. Okay, now this is a cheap, this is just a cheap, cheap UHC filter, all right, and it screws on there. Again, it's a good fit, and as you can see there, you have now got a two inch filter screwed in onto the fuel flattener and fork reducer. This can now be installed onto the rotator unit. So now we have got the filter installed. I can now just use a standard M48 thread and I can just screw it onto Now the thread's a bit tight on this because this is a new T-ring. So it probably is a good idea just to put a little bit of lubricant onto the threads on there. But it's, it, is a, it does fit, it's a bit on the tight side. So just a little bit of lubricant, a fine oil, very thin smear won't go amiss. But as you can see there now, with that T-ring, I can now install without having, without having to change different filters on the bar, the T-ring now. I can now change the filters that way on this side. And I can then screw on my T-ring like so, and there you go, okay? That's given me plenty of room for my, um, my sensor, all right, and fantastic little device there we've got, all right. Really is a, an impressive fuel flattener with that internal two-inch filter system. Really is a bonus. So the only bug bear I have is it's a bit on the heavy side. The thread's a bit, a bit tight on the T-ring because don't forget I am using a, a good... Uh, T-ring there. Now the other thing is, I also like to show you, is this. If we unscrew this part, you can see, if we take a closer look, as you can see here, you've also got the air gap. So with this thread, you can unscrew this size here, and you can get work out the exact working distance for your camera sensor or, uh, or astral camera. Now this extends all the way down to, if we go all the way down, there's a lot of thread in here by the way. It looks to me it can go all the way down to yeah, 15 millimeters there. So we've got 15 millimeters of play. And again, there's a lock screw here. Well, that's a bit stiff. There we go. We've got a lock screw where you can adjust the air gap. Okay, so you've got a measurement here and that will give you the precise air gap. So it's got an internal adjustment. So if you're using a, a camera where this sensor is very close, you can adjust the field flattener and focal reducer to get the ideal air gap. Now the air gap for this field flattener and focal reducer to work is around 55 millimeters. It can work at a push 
at 56 millimeters of air gap. So in order for this fuel flattener and focal reducer to work properly, making sure that your stars are well corrected across the field so that the stars are not curved, they're not deformed at the edges, providing you get that perfect air gap of 55 millimeters or at a push 56 millimeters of air gap you should be fine and I do like this internal adjustments really is a nice little feature so again you are getting a lot of bang for your buck so that 219 pounds is really good now bear in mind if you if you're using the DSLR camera you don't really need uh, to adjust this all right the the air gap on my Canon for example I have a 600d Canon DSLR camera and the the actual sensor the backup from the main body uh, to uh, that is around 44 millimeters now if I add the t-ring here I've got the t-ring here if I measure the t-ring this also gives out a space so at the moment i've got a an air i've got a a gap there on the t-ring which is 11 millimeter thick t-ring so if you add them together we're already at 55 millimeters so with this focal reducer all you do is just screw you just take it all the way down and then two zero and then you just screw down the cap the threading and I must say really good threading as well so you just screw it all the way down to zero and then you can just screw onto there put your t-ring on there so with the t-ring installed and the, the actual gap, you can screw on the T-ring onto the fuel flattener and there, bingo, you've got your 55 millimeter air gap for, for this fuel flattener and focal reducer to work with this camera. So everyone, I'm going to show you a nice useful app that I use to work out sensor size on given telescopes. So I can estimate the field of view. Now this is the Astronomy Tools website. You can check it out. Just type in Astronomy Tools and you'll find it through Google, whatever. And as you can see here, it'll give you a list of apps which you can work out field of view, use star charts, cloud forecasts, or even just looking up general coordinates of given deep sky objects in the night sky. There is loads of other calculators as well. As you can see here at the top, right, there's there's loads of other things, but we're not going to go into too much. So we're going to select field of view calculator. And as you can see here, we've got the field of view calculator. It's very simple to use. You can use it in visual mode or you can use it in binocular mode, but we're going to use it in imaging mode. Now you can go through the messier objects, you can go through solar system or you can do a, a general search for the NGC or the IC objects or any Cadwell objects. Unfortunately the search engine on this side is not great and some of the pictures that are on this website are a bit outdated and some are not quite to scale. So I use the Messier ones because they're easier, they give you a, a wide range of the whole the Messier objects and the one I'm going to pick out is the um, Andromeda Galaxy. It's a huge galaxy, it's massive, it's a massive target, it's, it's over four full moon diameters, it's a massive target and we just scroll down now, because we're using the Robert Valley Optics Horizon 60 ED telescope, it is a relatively new telescope. So the options for that telescope is not on the Astronomy Tools website. So as long as you know the focal length, 
which is 360 and you know the aperture you've got enough information there so we know the camera luckily the app does have loads of cameras you just pick the camera or CCD or CMOS camera you're going to use luckily my camera which is the 60 which is the 600D and it has that size also I need to highlight that the 60DA or 60D is also a similar size resolution camera same size sensor just the pixel size is just a little bit smaller but only a fraction but basically it's the same it's basically the same cam camera sensor we've got the figures calculated it's a f6 ratio and it works out the resolution which I believe I'm either under sampling there ideally you want the resolution between 1 or to 2 value in between 1 and 2 would be the perfect resolution of your camera but that will go into another category elsewhere so as you can see here we're using no ball or lens and uh, you can also do the angle as well work out the angle so we're going to add the view and this is what we've got this square box is basically the sensor of the camera that's fitted to the telescope this will be the exact image that when you take that picture of that deep sky object at five minutes exposure for example you can clearly see I can fit the entire Andromeda galaxy in that field of view now if we angle it say like we angle it at 45 degrees you can see there that the camera can fit the entire spiral arms in there so as you can see there 45 degrees the Andromeda galaxy fits nicely however it's only just and I mean it's only just because when you take deeper exposures 10 minutes exposure yeah you'll whitewash the center core but then you get more of the spiral arms the fainter detail it'll end up stretching to about here so you're literally near the edge of that sensor so as you can see really good app and you can figure out your pixel size uh, your sensor size and work out how how much you can estimate uh, that field of view through the telescope now we're going to select the point eight times on this selection here you can do barlow lenses up to five times barlow all the way down to reducing to point three three times but what we're concerned about is the 0.8 times reducer. As you notice here, you've got the focal ratio of f4.8. Uh, we're also undersampled a lot. Not really concerned about it. All I'm concerned about is the field of view. And as you can see here, the focal ratio is 4.8. We know as we're going to get a much bigger field of view and a faster uh, a more reduced exposure time so if i was taking a five minute exposure i've literally almost halved the exposure time so to get the same level of detail on the image so we're going to click add view and as you can see there with the 0.8 times focal reducer you can see the camera size sensor the field of view is much larger so you can fit the entire andromeda galaxy with it its full extension of its spiral arms in that field of view quite comfortably and this is the reason why we need a focal reducer so then guys and girls as you can see here we've got the 60ED and to install this 
uh, Willy Not Optics focal reducer and fuel flattener, all you've got to do is so to take this off, the easiest way is to take remove the two inch format adapter is you can see this nil part here. All you gotta do is grab the nil part like so. And as you can see, it will totally unscrew the entire setup like so. So as you can see, it takes off both the rotator and, and the two inch format adapter. Okay, so your rotator will be taken off and your two inch, two inch eyepiece holder will be removed as well. Rele revealing the what, M54 thread we then screw this in place. Notice how I've got the two inch filter system in, inside. We then line up the threads like so. And then there you go. See that it screws in there perfectly. And as you can see, it locks in there. All we do is just make sure it screws in. So as you can see here, you've got the lockdown screw and you can just loosen this off and just rotate it any way you want, like so. Very nice and smooth. So as you can see here, on the focuser, now the field flattener has a angle gauge on the rotator. Now on this field rotator, the 180 degrees is highlighted here. So it's not quite uh, accurate. So this gauge is probably designed more for the William Optics telescope, which it is. So the 61 branded William Optics will be perfect. So ideally it should have been, um, the marker should have been round about zero up to about here. So, so with this decal, see you've got, you've got the marker there. So as you can see there, it's, it's not quite right. So, but I'm not really bothered about that. As long as if, if I can rotate the main camera body like so in any way I want, that's all I'm concerned about. All right, I'm not really fussed at all if the decals don't match the um, the angle on the decal on the on the reducer. So then, guys and girls, the moment of truth. Does the fuel flattener and focal reducer from William Optics work on this telescope? Let's find out. Now, as you can see, I've got a blurred but wide field image, but we can make out some detail on the landscape I'm viewing. So I'm going to focus it. Yes, get in. So as you can see there, we've got a really wide field view of the tower in my location. I just need to centralize it. Yeah, look at that. I'm impressed. So as you can see here, we've got a wide, much wide field view of that tower by the sea. And as you can see, it works on 
this a Ryzen 60 ED. Fantastic, absolutely amazing. I'm absolutely thrilled to bits. As we unlock the screw, we can also rotate the camera. So we can orientate. As you can see there. There we go. So we've got a fantastic view there. So guys and girls, we've gone back to the standard flattener for the Horizon, which is the Rover Valley Optics branded field flattener. Now this will not give the reducing effect. This will give you the F6 ratio at 360 millimeters focal length. Now as you can see there, I've kept the um, William Optics rotator because this field flattener will fit that and it's so easy to change it. It fits perfectly onto the DSLR camera. We've got the view and as you can see we're going to focus the image. And there you go. As you can see there, we've got a reduced field of view and a sharp, fully corrected image. As you can see there in this picture, is, um, we've got a much shorter field of view and so you can see more of the tower itself. So, going to compare both the results and see what we get. So, there you have it guys and girls. What do you reckon? really really impressive stuff now i'll be honest with you guys and girls i did take the gamble you know it's a huge gamble to take especially if you're forking out 200, 219 pounds for something that might not actually work with this telescope system however it worked it's a real shame that I can't physically test it because I've had three months of no clear skies whatsoever. I've had 100 mile an hour winds. I've had the rain, the snow, you name it. I've not been able to test nothing, all right, which is really frustrating. As particularly now I've got a 0.8 focal reducer and field flattener capable of turning this awesome 60 ed to an f 4.8 ratio which to be honest with you, very fast for a wide field telescope setup as you can see the results looking through that test rule view you can clearly see that that landscape view is corrected that field of view all the way across the image you've got a nice sharp clear image very colourful, the also proves that the optics on that William Optics field flattener and focal reducer is working. It does work with the telescope perfectly. I'm really satisfied with the results. And usually a lot of William Optics probes are really good, very well manufactured, engineered CNC products, all right? Very trusted brand as well. But I'll be honest with you guys and girls, the flaws is the decals on the angle on the rotator don't match the telescope, which is a real shame. Bear in mind that this FFFR is only designed for the 61 William Optics telescopes. So bear that in mind. So I'm not going to pick up on that as such. The main focus was does that fit? And it does. It fits really well with loads of thread in there. So no risk of it coming off 
whatsoever. There's no free play. I love the rotator. It must have an internal bearing in there, which is so smooth and crisp, and the locking mechanism is outstanding. The only bug bear I have is it's very expensive. It is £219. It's not cheap. I Don't get me wrong, guys and girls. Also, the other qualm I have is it's heavy. You know, you're adding literally almost 500 grams of weight onto that telescope. I mean, this telescope alone is around about 3.7 kilograms. Adding that is 4.7 kilograms of weight, all right, onto this Ioptron mount, which personally, it's, it's literally up to it's literally up to the payload, maximum payload of this mount. So this is a disadvantage of using that William Optics uh, focal reducer. It is a heavy lump of glass and metal, which gives Rover Valley Optics an idea. Guys, if you can design a Rover Valley Optics fuel flattener and focal reducer that's lightweight, and purposely designed so that the decals match this field flattener and focal reducer onto this telescope. You got your guys have got your guys are onto a winner. And if you can make the prices cheaper and also make the product much lighter, in a way so it's robust but also stable. This item on this telescope. Uh, this optical device is very stable. So Rover Valley Optics, please have a look whether a 0.8 times focal reducer, if you have your branded product fitted on there, you, this could really benefit, not just for the 60 ED, but it can also benefit the 72 ED. Because bear in mind, William Optics do offer the 73 millimeter variant of refractor on their series of models and I'm strongly convinced don't quote me guys and girls but I'm convinced that the 73 branded of the focal reducer may actually fit the 72 ED horizon because the reason why I'm saying this is the focal ratio is the same the focal um, the glass, the optical glass on those telescopes are exactly the same. And to be honest with you, the fitment's exactly the same as well. So I am very convinced that the M4, the M54 thread will fit the 72 ED. But bear in mind, guys and girls, you must purchase. If you've got the 72 ED Horizon model, then please. Um, get the 72 field flattener and focal reducer from William Optics because that's a different type of corrector and field flattener. It will not work. Now, this 60 ED will not work on another 60 millimeter or it won't work on a 72 millimeter. This is not interchangeable. This focal reducer and field flattener is only designed for this type of telescope. With the same focal ratio, the same focal length of 360 millimeter, and the optical glass exactly the same. Hence the reason why you've got fine, sh really sharp, very contrast images. All right, because this field flattener is designed for William Optics. I am so over the moon that this fits onto the 60ED. I've done a lot of research, guys and girls. Please hit a like button because I've done a lot to get this far and take this chance. Would I recommend the William Optics 0.8 focal reducer and fill flattener? Yes, I would. I would definitely give it four and a half stars. Now, the reason why I'm giving it four and a half stars is because it's a very heavy item. It's 500, 500 grams of weight is a very lump, heavy lump of glass and, and assembly to do with. All right, and particularly if you combine that with a CCD and a filter wheel system 
on there it's going to add even more weight so bear in mind guys and girls that's why i rewarded that is because it is a heavy lump you do get the two-year warranty, which is a good thing as well. So anything goes wrong with it, you can, you know, I've got a really good warranty with that product as well. But it's high-grade product. I can't really whinge about it as such, other than the weight of this item and the cost of this item is quite, quite a lot. And to most, most of us guys and girls, it's a lot of money to invest in and a lot of money to waste if it didn't work. So please, Rubber Valley Optics, please look into this because I can see a potential here for Rubber Valley Optics to design their own focal reducer and field flattener 0.8 times, not only to benefit the 60 ED Horizon, but also to benefit their 72 ED Horizon telescopes as well. So please, Rubber Valley Optics, take this into serious consideration now you can buy this from rubber valley optics please check out the website below the link is in the description you can order this william optics uh, fffr from them at a good price it's a real shame that i can't test it out on the actual deep sky objects themselves because the weather it's the way it is please guys and girls i will keep you informed so again if you're new to the channel please click please click on uh, the subscribe button and please share this video out again sharing this video out will not only just help you guys but it help many others who probably own a different type of telescope as long as it's a f6 with 360 millimeter and f and fpl 53 glass on a telescope that size may actually help uh, help them uh, purchase this William Optics and it may work out for them. I can't guarantee that it's gonna work for other telescope brands, but I can definitely tell you guys and girls that it does fit the Horizon and it fits it perfectly, absolutely perfectly. No flexure, no free play, nothing at all. And you got nice, Crisp, crisp images so yes i would recommend it and again please hit the bell we'll keep you notified for any new videos coming out soon and believe me i've got tons of projects coming your way in 2022 and believe me the only bugbear i have is i have very lack of clear skies and that's what's really really frustrating i've got loads of things i love to show you guys and girls and loads of projects product reviews but it's just the weather's just not been kind to me lately so there you go really good product very satisfied results so far so that comes to the end of my video thanks again thanks for watching and i wish you all clear skies